Now, before you start your color pencils, you want to make sure that your picture is completely dry. The color pencils will not work if your project is not dry enough. So um, one thing that I want you guys to kind of practice um, in general, if you like watercolor and you want to continue using watercolors, if you have big water spots on your paper and you see big water puddles like you might see, um, I have these shiny areas, um, and those are considered a lot of water, little puddle areas. So you can take a paper towel and just very lightly kind of blot where those areas are. And that would help you, um, that will help your picture dry a lot faster, but that will also help um, for it to not ruin your, your paper if you're using maybe a little bit um, of some thinner paper so it can help your picture look the best, okay? So if you need to blot your paper, go ahead and do that, but um, no matter what, it's gonna take some time to dry, so just wait for your picture to dry, and then you can, um, as you're waiting, you can pause the video, and then when you're ready, just play it, and we'll be right where you need to be for those color pencil steps. Now, once your picture is dry, you are going to take your color pencil, so I'm gonna move my watercolors out of the way, and I'm gonna pull my color pencils closer. And now here, um, there's not a very specific way to go about it. Um, you're just gonna kind of do what you think would look best, do what you think your picture needs, and um, using the same colors that you use to paint in your, your, uh, your creature or your aqua corn. And so for mine, since I used a pink with a little bit of like a darker edge on the left, I'm going to find my, I think I'm going to go with like an orange, pull in um, a similar but kind of different color. And I'm just going to add a little bit of shading along the snout here. I'm going to make it darker along the edge and then start to fade out a little bit uh, as I go a little bit more up. Again, you don't have to do this. You're just going to do what you think would look best for yours. And I'm going to continue that um, orange. I'm going to add in a little bit of some pink here to fade that out, too. And if you'd like, you can just add light layers of every color into every section just to kind of pull it all together and add in a little bit of a darker shade. Um, I'm adding a lighter, uh, a lighter layer of pink all around the head. You probably can't even see it, but um, that's basically the goal is to not really be able to see it, but just to kind of blend some um, areas in a little bit more than they were able to blend in with the watercolors. Okay, so once I have that, I'm going to continue on with this orange here, and I'm going to add just a little bit of some like shading along the uh, top edge. And again, you don't have to do um, what I'm doing. You can basically do whatever feels right for you and your creature. Even if you are doing the aqua corn like me, you can use any other um, colors that are different than me. You can do it in different ways. It's totally up to you. All right, now along the darker edge, I'm gonna go in with some purple 
And I'm going to kind of pull my darker area out a little bit more just by going in and making my darker area just a little bit darker. I'm just pressing lightly using the side of my pencil and using short strokes just to kind of pull that in together. be able to see a difference um, you might not it's just kind of a gradual change so if you'd like to if you'd like it to be a very big change then just keep adding more and more layers you can blend the colors together a little bit more you can do whatever you feel um, you need to do now I'm going to take um, my pink and I'm just gonna go in and add a couple of texture lines kind of like little uh, W's all along the body for some texture. Right here. So I'm just stopping and I keep looking at my aqua corns body just to see kind of what. Um, what looks best. It's always um, nice and best if you guys take some time after adding a couple of steps. Step back from your picture and see, do you like what you just did? Is there something different that you can do? What more can you add? Where else can you add it? So it's always nice just to kind of um, take a little break from what you're working on and figuring out what your next step and plan is. All right, but once you go in and add just a little bit more detail, I think I'm going to go and uh, make my darker color just a little bit darker. I'm going to actually add in um, a little bit of, I think I'm going to go in with some glue to make that purple. Um, just a little bit darker. I'm just going to use the side of my pencil, press lightly, and just add this light layer all across all of those dark um, areas. So you probably can't really see much of a difference or a change. But I did add it, <laughs> and you can do whatever, again, whatever you think looks best for you and your picture. Now, if some areas kind of um, don't really stand out that you do that you wanted to stand out originally, like my horn and my ears kind of look a little flat, I'm gonna add in some more color over there because um, the horn especially is kind of what I find the, um, to be the the best part of these aqua corns. So um, that's what I kind of want to bring out a little bit more. So I'm gonna take. Um, some orange, kind of pull that in, and I'm going to take a little bit of pink and pull that in. Okay, 
Okay, so that stands out a little bit more. I think I'm going to do a little bit of a darker area. Actually, I did not do that with my purple, so I'm going to add in a little bit of purple into my darker area. Add this little detail along the ear. I'm going to add a second layer all along my head just to make that stand out a little bit more. And then once you have added all of the extra detail that you'd like to add to your aqua corn, then you can start adding it into your background, wherever you would like to place that extra detail. Okay. So now I'm going to go in and start adding some extra detail into my, my ground here. So I'm going to go along my reefs and just add a couple of detail lines inside. You may not be able to see it because I um, my reefs are so small. But just add whatever detail that you'd like to add. I'm just adding little curved lines inside each using the same color that I used to paint with. You can also go in with a darker shade, like for orange you may use red, for pink you may use red, for green you might want to use blue, just to make them stand out a little bit more. If you got a little bit of your ocean color into that, then you can also color them back in with your color pencil and that might help bring that color back. Okay, then you can use whatever colors you want to color in um, some of the detail at the bottom, like the stones that you have. You might want to outline them if you'd like and not color them in, or you can color them in. It's really up to you, whatever you'd like to do. If you'd like to add some more with just color pencil, I'm just kind of lightly add that in. You can do that as well. All right, and then once you've added in whatever detail you want to add to the bottom, you can also go in and maybe add a shadow underneath your aquacorn on your ground. So whatever color you use for your ground, I'm gonna take this yellow orange, I'm going to just lightly kind of blend, add some color here, and blend it out for some shadow underneath the aqua corn. That's um, kind of floating above. So I'm going to add just a little bit of shadow underneath the tail, and then maybe continue it on into the rest of the ground. Then you can lightly fade it out. And 
And so once you've added whatever you'd like, um, you can go into your ocean. And if there's anything that, that you'd like to add there, you can go ahead and add it. So I'm going to add just a little bit more blue into my little creatures over here. Make them just a little bit darker. And then if you'd like to add maybe little water bubbles in the ocean uh, around your other creatures or even your creature that you um, created, you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to take a lighter blue. And I'm just going to add a little bit of circles for some bubbles. You can add them in different sizes. Once you've finished up everything that you'd like to add, then that is it for our picture. So go ahead and finish up what you'd like to add for with your color pencils. But once you are done, you are done. So great job, everyone. Um, thank you for all of your hard work, and I really hope you enjoyed your picture. Um, I almost forgot if there's any areas that you'd like to fill in for like the eye or the nostril or any areas that are open and you'd like to fill in, then you can do that as well. But once you are done, um, Again, great job, and now we're going to just finish up some review for our um, picture and our story here. And um, All right, so I'm going to pull back in my little handy-dandy story structure chart here. I'm going to move my sample away so it's not distracting. So we went over um, all the left side of our story, but now let's go over our climax solution, moral, and application. We just finished our project. Um, so we'll just finish up talking about our book and then we're um, going to be fully done with this class. Okay, so we left off at our, at our climax. We talked about Lana finding the aqua corn, rescuing it, and um, learning about the traditions that have been, um, that have not been followed by the villagers and the underwater world that is um, being destroyed by the overfishing that the villagers are doing. So um, for our climax of this book, um, we find out that another storm is coming. So Lana needs to start working quickly to create a balance between her world and the underwater world and have them work together so that way um, the underwater world can be saved the land that the villagers live in can be saved, um, so that way the storm doesn't damage, you know, do more damage. Um, so she finds that it is up to her, and um, again, she can't really rely on the adults that she once looked up to, so she needs to uh, rely on herself. But um, for our solution here, she ends up working with the underwater creatures, and she is able to save her world and their world from harm. So, um, you know, we have this wonderful um, story that not only has um, this beautiful story arc of uh, the character Lana who grows. Um, she starts off, you know, remembering her mom and everything that happened at the village. She um, is a little bit a little bit sad, then she finds the aqua corn, and then she learns this devastating news that the that the coral reefs are in harm um, due to the villagers and the overfishing, and um, so she takes it upon herself to, and she's determined to um, find the balance between her world and the underwater world once again. So, um, for the moral of our story, we have. Uh, we have a couple of themes. One of the main themes that can be found in this book is an environmentalism theme. At the end of the book, if you have a physical copy or an ebook, um, you may have seen that our artist Katie O'Neill actually gives a lot of information about the real coral reefs here on Earth. Um, and how they can be damaged as well, and they can be impacted by actions that uh, human beings take here in our world. Um, it also ties into, you know, a, a 
um, bigger than the ocean and apart from the ocean, there's much, uh, many things that can impact the ecosystems and um, the world, animals that live in the world, their habitats. And so um, this really touches on the idea that um, we have to focus on things that we can control and what our actions do and how it impacts our world. And then what are ways that we can communicate that once we learn ourselves, how can we communicate that to others around us to help our world and, um, uh, and animals and species and life on our world that could be um, that could potentially be harmed by actions that people are taking. So um, this is a really good thing to think about environmentalism because, you know, we, we love the animals that we see around us. We love the world that we live in. We love going to the beach, going to the ocean. Um, we love seeing the beautiful animals in the forests and the rainforests and the jungles and all of these um, all of these places in our world have some form of um, have something that can be harmed um, by the actions of humans. And so um, if we learn and take the time to educate ourselves on how to help these these uh, species, plant life, animals or places in our world, um, if we find out how to help them, then we can teach others as well. So um, that's a big major theme and moral to our story here. So um, another thing that we can think about is how to make changes now for a better future. So that's another way that environmentalism kind of uh, ties in is um, with our actions and the way that we help change uh, our world and our actions then uh, we can hope and we can change for a better future. Okay, so with that said, all um, everything that I just talked about for our moral, for the application, I'm, I want you guys to think about how you think you can save things on our planet, uh, how you think you can save things on our planet that are in danger. So if you don't know of anything yet, you can ask your parents and um, you guys can do a little bit of research, um, but there are many different um, places around Earth, many different species around Earth that are um, in harm of either going extinct, which means that they will no longer exist, or um, that they are endangered, which means that they are close to becoming extinct. So um, you want to think about these things and how your actions can possibly save um, our world. Okay. And so again, you can talk to your parents about it. You can do your own research and then talk to your friends and your family about it and see how you can help this change. Alrighty. So I really hope um, you guys enjoyed this project and I really hope you guys enjoyed this book. Um, it was really fun for me to talk about and to learn with you guys. So thank you again. So I had a lot of fun with you guys today, and I hope you did as well. And if you haven't read this book, I really hope that this project and all that we talked about um, excites you to read and learn more. And so thank you all again for joining. I hope to see you again for our next class. Great job, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.